Yeah, welcome to another exciting episode of Daft Dumb Apple Farmer Talks. Today we're gonna talk about crab apples. You know, it's uh, like something when I was a kid. Anyways, you could sling at somebody like you're crab apple, you're crabby, you're you know. It wasn't a nice thing to say, and generally our association with crab apples is also kind of mixed to say the the least. Um, Crab apples, a lot of people will know them from their yards or parks or something like that. The nice flowering things that give little tiny fruit that nobody wants to eat. Um, most crab apples that I know are actually edible, although their level of bitterness varies considerably and their level of acidity varies considerably as well. Um, this, for instance, is Whitney crab, probably the largest crab apple that I know. This is out of Illinois, 1860s kind of thing. But crab apples originally came out of Kazakhstan. You know, that's the apple uh, Garden of Eden sort of place. Um, and so crab apples, along with almost all of the apples that we know in today's world, came originally from that part of the world. In America, crab apples have had a place uh, in a lot of different aspects, culinary and beverage in particular. Um, this Whitney crab was particularly prized for canning for pickled apples. So if you've ever tried a large pickled apple, that's probably a, a Whitney crab. If you haven't, you should if you can find one anymore. Um, but Crab apples have a lot of characteristics that lended themselves to the pioneers of America and the early generations of, of uh, white people in America came to bring crab apples over. Number one, they made great hard cider. And I mean, this was the game back in the 1600s, 1700s. Hard cider was a big thing. Crab apples make a really interesting hard cider, okay? You can make hard cider out of almost every apple but the quality ciders come from things that have a little bit of kick to them, uh, be it extra tannins, be it uh, extra acidity, uh, be it extremely high sugars. And crab apples can combine any one of those or any two of those in a very interesting uh, fashion and make a good cider. Crab apples were also grown even commercially for crab apple jelly. There's, there were orchards when I grew up, there were crab apple orchards. Um, some of the varieties that were used in them were very susceptible to a disease of apples, fire blight. Um, although crab apples, as a general rule, tend to be pretty low maintenance. They tend to be um, relatively, a lot of the commercial crab apple varieties are resistant to apple scab and resistant to fire blight, which is, of course, a great thing. So in addition to Whitney crab, we grow Dolgo crabs, we grow Virginia crab, um, and we're getting interested in some other crabs as well, but we haven't got there yet. So crab apples for us are really interesting, both for hard cider. The Dolgo crab is an interesting one that came out of Russia, of course, Kazakhstan via Russia, you could say. Um, but the Dolgo crab is really a, a much smaller, dark red, just fantastic to eat. If you like something tart, fantastic to eat if, you're, if you eat them fresh off the tree. And those can be pickled and done a bunch of stuff with as well, but they make an outstanding applesauce, you know, as a, just add a handful to a big batch of applesauce or blend it in with some sweet cider. It just, it adds a little bit of kick and some really interesting action. There's some great hard ciders made with Dolgo crab if you ever get a chance. So crab apples in general aren't just ornamentals. There are a lot of interesting crab apples, some of which are just plain sweet, not a bit of tartness to them. Uh, Whitney crab doesn't have a lot of tartness to it. And uh, so they, they have a lot of utility for a backyard orchardist, a commercial orchardist. Um, in today's world, we're always looking for varieties that are interesting and the crab apples start to really stand out there. Um, cultivating them is very similar to cultivating a regular apple tree. This Whitney crab you can see, I mean, Good Lord, look at the growth on this thing. This is an old tree and still putting out two, two and a half foot of growth a year. Um, a lot of the crab apples that I'm familiar with, the Dolgo and stuff, are not such vigorous growers. But generally speaking, uh, 
you know, growing a crab apple tree is no different than growing a, a regular apple tree. You just get out there, you plant it in the right spot, you give it some water, and watch it grow. Choosing the right crab apple is a lot more difficult task. So you want to know about, you know, what am I going to use it for? If it's an eating crab, boy, your choice is narrow in quickly, you know, because, especially if you don't have an appetite for real tart. If it's one that you want to make hard cider of, there's a myriad of opportunities and you can get online, check it out. There's a lot of different options there. And for culinary purposes, it's sort of in between. There are, there are quite a few varieties that add rich color and rich tannins and rich tartness to uh, both savory and sweet dishes. So yeah, try a crab, get crabby.